Welcome back to the Tidarium Hangar. This is Mike. I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for May 22nd, 2022, 2022. We have some updates on big news. We also have some small Transformer news to talk about. So Masterpiece, Legends, and of course, Mainline. We got updates from Ramen Toy pulling off some really amazing stuff over there. We have G.I. Joe classified, well... This Cobra Island stuff is coming back. We got some He-Man news, but don't get too excited about it. And we got some breaking news that showed up on a YouTube channel, but then went out to all of the news sources for Star Wars. So we do have some Star Wars news and more coming up. And starting out with some cool stuff at Show Z, looks like Make Toys is going to put out their Thundercracker and their Skywarp. They're going to be $135 a piece. They should arrive in June. They are a little bit over 9 inches tall. It says 9.84 inches tall. Now, I want to say there are newer options, but this was the best mold for a while. And this still carries the best paint job, or at least my Starscream is better painted than any of the other ones that are out there. So there's a plus to it. If you're in on this one, 135 each. There's pre-orders for the Vectron Lab, their version of Constructicon and Devastator. This is $1 down. We don't know the full price yet. We don't know the, the availability of when it's going to come. It says third quarter of 2022. So pretty interesting that it's picked up by Show Z. I feel way more confident in this set and this company simply because Shosi is carrying the product. Shosi even has an entire section that you could go to that's going to be this. This is the only thing in that section right now, but they plan for Vectron Labs to be around for a while. Speaking of that, there's a tab for this Metagate. It's the G01 Haiku Drift. Anyway, it is an interesting looking figure that is now, there's no price. $2 down, 7.87 7 inches tall, triple changer, excellent mobility, arms, thighs, double joints, and wrist can also make movement in the sword pointing forward, and rear wing from the car can form, also be raised and lowered. So, here are the other two forms, the alt modes, and you get a cool looking car and a helicopter, so that's what it transforms into, and according to what it says, the car mode the spoiler can go up and down. Starting out with some masterpiece news from Takara, the MPM-13 Blackout. This is packaging images, this is the front, and it looks pretty good in both modes there, and the packaging looks very reminiscent of other Takara packaging. Here it is on the back right here, and it shows kind of everything that could go on with it, so really no surprise there. And I wonder, is this exactly what it'll look like if it comes to Target? Uh, here is another updated picture of the figure. I think we've seen this before, but maybe it's new. Anyway, supposed to be new pictures. There we go. So we got a teaser last week. Now we got Fans Hobbies, the MB23 Power Master Dreadwing. And it's pretty cool because this does sort of combine with uh, Dreadwind. But there it is in bot mode. Here he is compared to some other stuff that Fans Hobby is working on. So you kind of see scale. So it's going to be a pretty good size figure because these figures are pretty decent size already. Here we go in the alt mode and it looks really sleek, really sharp. That is a nice looking alt mode and I do like it. So if you don't know what this is, like I didn't know before Titan Returns what it was, uh, this combines. So this is how it gets into its combined mode. So this will be the front, I'm guessing. And pretty cool. Will look pretty impressive when it's combined in its alt mode. An interesting gimmick. So next up, we're getting into the x Transports MX-39 Nightingale. And when I just first saw the picture, I thought, fans hobby again? But this is x Transports, So pretty cool. This is the Masterpiece Scale Master Force Minerva. And it does look pretty good. I think it's actually a lot sleeker, thinner than what they did already with fans hobby. But still, it looks pretty cool. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a little, little more challenging of a transformation also but i think that it's going to be a pretty solid looking figure overall in both modes here it is from the back so you get a back view and just cleans up really well looks great in both modes i mean x boss does 
really good with their designs and nailing the original, well, the tune or whatever you're going for, they nail it. And we got pictures of the MX-37 Cannon. This is the Nightbeat. That's their take on Nightbeat. Pretty cool looking figure and character overall. I kind of look forward to quite a few figures coming from x Transbot soon. Here's the alt mode and yeah, looks pretty good. Kind of funny, people keep saying x Transbots has a nice collection of pre-order renders. That's kind of funny, but you can say the same thing about Hasbro or their G.I. Joe line. So if you saw the video on Friday, then you know that we are going to see a Thomas KO of fans toys. So this is RP44 Thomas. Now, some information that was kind of thrown around in that video in the comment section. First off, one of the things that was pointed out was that there are two companies making KOs of fans toys. Not just one. So that's probably why there's going to be a whole lot of chatter and a whole lot of reveals and a whole lot of stuff coming up for pre-order pretty soon with them and then some of the other things are that they're really just KOing old designs uh, there's a story behind that I'm not really sure how accurate all that is but they're not KOing the new designs just yet and then it was also pointed out to me that the official fans toys is put up for pre-order $20 less than the original release of Thomas the official because it's not going to come with a stand or uh, the train track, the train track stand. So you're not getting the stand or train track and you will with this KO and the KO is probably going to be close to $100 cheaper. So anyhow, that's some information that came out of that video. Still, if you didn't check it out, check it out. A lot of fun. But this KO is available for pre-order at a couple of places. The only place I really have ever gone to is TF Direct on that kind of thing. So uh, ShowZ will not be carrying this because ShowZ still wants to carry official Fan Toys product. So we got some pictures of Flame Toys model Leo Prime packaging and sample. So this is the box. This is the model kit. Let's look what it looks like when you put it together. And I guess they include this cloth, uh, cloth cape with it. So looks pretty cool. Looks pretty good. Looks like you'd expect. And with a character like this, a little bit of stylization isn't so bad. I think it looks... Pretty on point with the source material with a little bit of an updated stylization to it. The biggest news this week has to be like toys and their Metroplex. Now this is the alt mode, the base mode, and there's been some question of what it's going to look like. I'm sure, obviously, you could do multiple different configurations the way you want it, but this is kind of showing what you can do with it. I think it looks pretty good. I think it's spot on what you'd want for a base mode or Metroplex. I mean, there's probably some different configurations and all that, but blows the original G1 toy out of the water, and that's what we want. It's even better, in my opinion, than what we got with the Titan class. So with that, of course, carrying a price tag that I'm hearing will be below a thousand, and that's pretty good, and should be out sometime this year, and will be a full-on production run, not 3D printed. I'm liking all of that. I am liking all of what I'm hearing about this. So. Anyhow, let's look at the other alt mode, and it's a thing you could do. It's that whole kind of thing you could do. There it is. Not looking too bad, though. Kind of a runway looking thing. And then here it is front and back with more of the bot mode. So updated pictures, really exciting project, and I look forward to seeing more. So kind of staying in line with Masterpiece, I really think these Super 7 Ultimate figures should scale with Masterpiece. Some of the characters will, not all of them, but some will. This one probably will, in my opinion, but this is an in-hand uh, picture of Action Master Super 7 Ultimate's bombshell, looking pretty cool. And here it is with this thing on his head, so you can, it's a thing you can do. You can put that thing on his head. So it looks interesting. Now, one of the notes was that it had the articulation you can expect from a Super 7 figure, which is not very much. And the reason for that, and the reason Brian Flynn says he doesn't put much articulation in, is because he wants the sculpt to look good, not break the sculpt with a bunch of seam lines. And I like that, I do like that. So that's uh, for me, it's for me. But still, this isn't going for a G1 toy or a G1 tune, it's going for Action Master. 
Now we saw this last week, but I want to show this picture from to Toy Bro. But this is the the Super Seven versus what you see at Walmart right now with the red line. So that's the size difference between them. So I, I do think it's bigger. I think it is better looking than what Red's giving us. But still, there's pluses and minuses to both. $55 for this thing. I got mine, uh, well, it's in stock. I don't know if I'm gonna ship it just yet, but it's pretty cool, it's pretty interesting. Probably not the greatest non-transforming line ever, but for 55, I guess you're getting your money's worth. So getting into Legends, I've had this picture for a week or two, and I keep forgetting to talk about it, but Metal Mechanic, Mechanic Studio, and all these other uh, McFans Toys names that are out there, they're making a Megatron. Now, I don't know if this is their original design. Are they KO upsizing something else? KO straight, same sizing something else? I don't know. So, uh, this is a teaser. Hopefully, we know more going forward. Or, hopefully, yeah. We'll, we'll see what's happening. I figured, by now, we'd have had more information. Okay, so, we have some Legends news quite a bit this week compared to normal. It's not a whole lot, but... This is the Iron Factory Legend Scale Lyokaiser uh, Breast Force team. This color renders, and it looks pretty cool. Looks pretty interesting. Nice Breast Force they got going on right there. And uh, yeah, I guess it's going to combine and all that kind of stuff. Here is the alt mode comparison. So I'm not sure how it's going to be sold. Probably individually, and you buy each one one at a time as they come out. But it's pretty interesting that they're actually showing it. And I do like how they just put the whole team out at once. They're showing the whole team at once instead of, hey, here's one character and a shadow of the rest. So I like that about it. So New Age is making their own Grimlock, which is cool. So I guess they're getting into the Dinobot game. And all of us that have collected these Legends figures for a while, they have the McFans Toys KO oversize of, I believe, DX9. I think it was DX9 that originally made them. And then, don't, don't quote me on that, please, but... Uh, then they KO oversized them, and that's what most people have in their collection. So with it, I like the toy colors or the toy aesthetic that they made originally, and now this is more of a tune aesthetic. The good thing about New Age, though, I mean, you know what's going to happen with New Age. They're going to make all these different recolors. So if you want a toy, I'm pretty sure, even though I haven't announced it yet, we're going to get it. Now, there is the alt mode, which looks really good, and New Age does great work, so... This is H44YMIR, the Legend Scale Grimlock. So looking good, but I'm actually looking forward to what recolor repaints they do going forward. Speaking of repaints, they've got a gold repaint of their Monero. It's the H2D. Is that what they call this? Uh, it is H2D, Monero. And Golden Lagoon Jazz looks pretty cool. I don't have any other golden figures, but I do like how there's some white paint apps on there like stripes and uh maybe kind of a silver for the headlight so it's not just all one color that's pretty cool and here's the alt mode alt mode looks pretty good pretty decent figure overall uh, we're about to find out though is the magic square one better oh wait did i say magic square well magic square is showing off pictures of what's going to be their mirage and it looks really good in fact i was bummed because i somehow missed out on the version of the new age mirage i wanted but then i started seeing pictures of comparisons and it's just smaller than i'd like to go with this character and magic square is right on scale for me but also the design is just awesome so it looks really good really good in both modes i look forward to this guy I got it pre-ordered so I guess I can't wait for it to come out. So there's pictures of this MC02 Ricky OH. Is that what it's called, Ricky? This is a Lucky Cat Cube. And I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how big this is going to be yet. But I'm thinking with the Lucky Cat, the cube's probably 12 inches, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to quote that just yet. But it looks really cool. And the thing about it is, this converts from the cube to the vehicle to the the bot mode to the component for the arm and all this stuff so a lot of stuff going on with this pretty impressive actually that they're doing it and pulling it off here's the back and 
I can't say it's the absolute cleanest version of Devastator we've ever seen. It is not. But they're doing so much with it that I kind of understand. So, still, it looks pretty cool and it's a very interesting project. I'm hoping it's the right size and scale for Legends, which is why I put it in my Legends segment. So Hasbro has this video of 360, it's for their Titan, uh, their Metroplex, and so the Legacy version. So they're just kind of, I guess, putting something out to promote it, so just keep it fresh in your mind and look at this thing. This is what it looks like in 3D, so you can see every angle of it. So kind of a cool, interesting kind of video. I don't see them do stuff like this that often, but... They put it up on their YouTube, so kind of worth taking a look at and checking it out and seeing what's going on. Some people are super ultra excited for this, and I will share your excitement with you. I will be excited for everybody that's excited for this. I won't say another negative thing because it is cool for people to get this. So we are getting some pictures of the Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus, and the interesting thing about this is that, yes, this is an open box leader class box which is strange because those were the first ones to be closed up now you can actually see the figure he looks real small in the box too it's like that's a big box for i guess not a big bot i thought he'd be pretty big for the box but anyway interesting how they're doing that they are changing their packaging and showing that they're hearing that people really want to see their stuff we we really want plastic over it though Here's what he looks like out of his cardboard prison there, and yeah, looks like a nice Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus. Works pretty good, pretty well. We've seen some pictures of this before, but there are more updated pictures. Here he is in his all mode. Of course, this is based off of the Kingdom design, not the Siege design, so I think that was a good choice, and looks great. That works pretty good. So we also got pictures of the Legacy Leader Class Black Convoy, R.I.D. Scourge, and these are in and images i didn't know this thing was available but there it is looking like that and here is the alt mode and that's what the alt mode looks like so really nothing surprising there just kind of a different color scheme and recolors and of course this is the correct way to do recolors in one of these kind of sets and here we go with uh the recolor versus the first one this is kind of based off of was it the laser optimus prime so still pretty interesting pretty cool new stuff that's coming out Okay, so from the same person of Prime vs. Prime, we got pictures of the Legacy Velocitron Voyager Cybertron Override. And that's the one on the right. When I first saw the pictures, I thought, what is that? And uh, I had to look into it. But there it is next to a Studio Series Hot Rod. And a very interesting looking figure. So really kind of cool, all the different accents on it. So very nice looking figure. And here it is in alt mode. So... Uh, I guess uh, we'll be getting this sometime, one day, one month, I'm, I'm not sure when, but uh, it will be kind of fun to actually see something on a shelf that's not, <laughs> that's not, you know, the same thing that we've looked at for the last three or four months. So if you have the new Commander class, Jetfire, Skyfire, then I guess you have a really good idea of how big this new Legacy Minotaur is going to be, so that's how big it's going to be, so you can... Do some comparisons yourself if you have that figure and say, oh, right, how will it stack up to your other combiners? How will it stack up? That's a pretty good size comparison right there. And the general transformer measuring stick versus prime. So that's how big he is versus prime. I think that's a good size. I think that works. That looks good. I mean, I always want a little bit bigger. I mean, I, I've always wanted a little bit bigger. Always. And because size really matters, we've got... The Victory Saber, that's the HasLab project, and size comparisons of it, which is pretty cool, pretty fun. You can get an idea how big it's going to be. And he's about 10 inches, 9.5 to 10 inches without Victory Leo. So there's just Star Saber by himself, and that's how big he's going to be. And no, the comparisons are not over yet. We have a Cyclonus comparison, and this is for the Generation Select version, which... I like the color scheme so much better than the first one they came out with, and I'm not surprised I didn't go crazy and buy a bunch of the original one because I knew a recolor was coming, and I think this recolor looks amazing. I like it so much more than the original one we got, and I love the original one, so that tells you how much I love this one now. 
Uh, some of the like the the blue on the abdomen, this kind of stuff, I don't know about. But still, overall, I like that purple better. I do like the silver. Really works. Really pops. All the comparisons right there, side by side, and that does look good too. So, great mold, great figure. I gotta get this. I don't know how much longer I can keep up a series of. What did you get for ten dollars? What did we get for ten dollars? But what did you get for six dollars and eighty nine cents? Well, this guy here. So check your targets if there's any left. Buzzworthy Bumblebee, this is Cybertron version. And I think it was a really cool idea, really cool design. I'd love them to do Wheeljack. We need the Wheeljack, and uh, that would be cool. And that would round it out. We've been waiting for that. But anyway, 689 blew my mind. Robin Toy has an update for us for their Apache Commander, and it looks really good. And I don't know if anything really was changed from this, but... Now I can actually have this in my collection. I've been wanting it in my collection for a long time. I don't have it. Really, prototypes, first shots, test shots, float around out there somehow, some way. But getting the true figure and his most iconic weapon system all in one shot, it's, it's outstanding. And, uh, you know, we're not going to get another option for it. And this is the one that they're bringing it to reality. I'm really excited. Getting those prototypes or the small little bit of figures that are floating around for those test shots and stuff. That's a really hard thing to do in the Centurion collecting community. Moving into mask here, this is Gloria Baker's uh, helmet. Now this is something that I've always had a problem with, with the original figures, because it'll show in the cartoon that the helmet goes on and the mask and that the neck goes in, but that really can't work to go over the head. I don't know if this is gonna be a swappable. You pop the head off, pop the helmet on. That's probably how they're gonna do it, but it looks amazing. This looks fan fantastic the way they're doing it and i'm really excited i get more and more excited because they just come up with different things to make it way better than the original kinner series so we got some motu news well this is strange I, i've got to be honest this is strange this talon fighter maybe it's in a show and i don't really watch the show but it's not what i think of as a talon fighter but i will say this about it i do think it looks cool and this is to fit those ten dollar figures the kitty line the netflix kitty line uh this isn't even revelations or any of that kind of stuff and what I hear is doing well and people like it and all that kind of stuff. I don't really watch the show. I didn't care for the show. I couldn't finish the first season. Maybe I'll pick up on the second. Maybe it gets better as it goes or something along those lines. But I am picking up the $10 figures, just one of each, just to see, kind of to have it. I think it's interesting in that respect, the new take on the characters. But also this talent fighter will probably be in on it. Speaking of that line of the $10, $10 figures, they're like five and a half inch figures, or uh, something along those lines. This is Mosquitra, which is a different take on Mosquitor. It's a female Mosquitor, I guess. I don't know. I've seen these images, leaks, and just really grainy images floating around and not knowing anything about it. But now we have package shots. I want to show that off. And look at the beautiful clear plastic bubble it's in. Uh, this is Stratos, and it's kind of nice to have a little bit different designs. I like the look of this Stratos. I don't really know if there's something like, is it sort of going to be before Stratos becomes Stratos? I, I'm not sure, but looks cool. And I'm really getting tired of seeing Stratos, the comic version at retail. So that's getting really old. Uh, Triclops. Uh, Triclops is always kind of fun. Cool figure. I really like the Revelations one. I really like the Revelations one, even though I don't, uh, the Revelations is okay show. Uh, we'll see what the series two or season two has for us, but this figure, it looks okay. Not the best Triclops I've ever seen. And we got some G.I. Joe news here. Now, I am surprised. I got this email from BBCS, and it said Cobra Island, whatever. So I clicked into it, and we're getting the Roadblock, the Beachhead, Breaker and the Ram. We're getting the Coil Cycle with Baroness again, and we're getting uh, the Barbecue. Now, there was that G.I. Joe June. These were all pretty readily available, except for Breaker and the Ram Cycle. And then Breaker and the Ram Cycle was up for like months. So I'm not sure, but BBTS is getting them and they're like five bucks more. So uh, this is strange. I don't know if they just bought out the rest of Target stock. I'm not sure the story behind it. I don't know if these are new production runs. I don't know if they're buying up all the excess that's sitting in Canada. I don't know. I don't know how they're getting it or what's going on with this pre-order. So interesting if, you're, if you need any of this. Get it there for like a $5 premium. So NECA is showing updated pictures of their War Duke and Grim Sword. Now this is the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And I think the original, I gotta look it up. I think the original was an LJ inline, probably. 
from back like 1983 or something. And the thing about those were that they weren't based on the show. They were more based on the game. And so they're going with based on the game. Now, uh, I think that since it's based on the LJ and Toy Line and that kind of franchise, and it looks pretty cool, very iconic. And on the right, we've got the War Duke. On the left, the Grim Sword. And I think the War Duke is more common of a figure. And Grim Sword is like a later series, harder to get one with that shield where the little snake thing comes out. So, really kind of cool idea that they're doing it. I would actually like to see figures based off of the actual TV show, though. So that's kind of where I'm at in that pocket. Let LJN be LJN, and let's get the TV show. But I think they know what they're doing. I think NECA knows what they're doing. Super 7 knows what they're doing. So these are going to sell well. So I almost said finding Star Wars news is like finding a needle in a haystack. It's more like finding water in the desert. <laughs> anyway, these figures are starting to show up. I did find uh, my R2-D2 is going to be shipping, but I wasn't able to secure... A Boba Fett, I'm sure from the stories I'm hearing that they'll start showing up at Target in the store in cases of six at a time. So I should probably be able to get my hands on one or two of those. I really like it because of the coin and the packaging and I hope they do this line further. I hope they do all of the droids figures. But we know with Hasbro's uh, very thin budget for Star Wars, that'll never happen. This is really awesome. So Usual Mike Television had a buddy of his send him some pictures of the back well the front and the back of one of these figures and this the boba fett and the back shows we're going to get ariva obi-wan kenobi we already knew about anakin and then we're going to get dinjarin we're going to get the ahsoka's trooper and darth vader and all that kind of stuff so we knew about most of this stuff but it's just kind of cool how usual my television was the first to show this to the world and then all of the news sites all of the yak faces and all of them were able to forward this information on because of him. So, pretty cool. So, good job, Usual Mike. Here's a picture of some of the stuff that's showing up around the world. This is Toy Hideout that's put this up. And, of course, the other sites have repeated and put this out in other places. But, showing you kind of the things that are showing up. Some of the stuff I just missed, like the Imperial Stormtrooper and a gun. And I remember I remember back in the day when they had the Hoth Trooper and gun and the Power of the Force 2 line, all that kind of stuff. But... Not too hot or keen on that packaging down there, but up top we get some some of the vintage collection releases. And Sol Guerrero should be shipping soon or showing up soon. And it is one of those deluxe figures. And it's only deluxe because he's a bit of a bigger figure. Kind of like Rekka. Rekka was a bigger figure, but he was packed with next to nothing. And so that I means it's just the way we're going these days. I think he's like $35 figure or something like that. I'll see when he shows up on the store shelves. But uh, I'm pretty excited to get one of these. I think it's a pretty cool character. But I'll probably wait for a sale. So what do you think about this week's weekly news and review? What else is out there that's cool that I missed? Because I like to stay in the know. Uh, like and subscribe. And Tigerium Hanger out.